Um, so up next is going to be Dr. Linda Mizun, who is joining us all the way from Sheffield remotely. She's a um, Amy speciality doctor and the founder of Hero of Health, a really exciting project that's really gathered momentum. And yeah, I'm really excited to have her join us today. Um, once our IT situation recovers, uh, we can um, bring her up on a second screen. You'll see her face over there. But for now, we're just gonna, yeah, go um, with you sharing your own slides as we agreed before. So thank you and yeah, welcome Linda. Hi, good morning, everyone. I am on a really, really large screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, really quite unusual. Um, while I don't see all of your uh, lovely faces, I will try to make it as natural as possible. So yes, um, I'm just gonna, are you happy for me to share the screen? Yes. Yes, please do. And sorry, one question I forgot to ask you, are you happy to um, manage your own time? Or do you want us to begin? Yeah, so and just to confirm how much time I have again. So you got like an hour in total, you know, with some time for questions at the end, kind of within that hour. Yeah, super. super. Thank you. Great. So I'll just share my screen. How is everyone doing down in Cornwall? Yeah. All good? Yeah, cool. I can hear you. That's good. <laughs> A little bit more comfortable. <laughs> um, great to Great to meet you all. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here with all of you. I'm so sorry I couldn't come down. I uh, really wanted to, but um, the beautiful places are far away and hard to see, hard to come by, like yours. So, super. I'm just gonna start sharing in large. Uh, are you seeing the screen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Super, awesome, thank you. Um, so we all know, I think in this room that more than less of the presentations in our GP practices and in on a and &E particularly now, uh, the two frontiers who have been pushing forward and seeing more than 80% of the cases are being um, chronic diseases, which we all know here that they are preventable and reversible. It's amazing to be able to speak to a crowd who actually resonates with this, because as you all know, it's quite difficult to get this message across to our colleagues sometimes and to the politicians. So um, I'm uh, Dr. Linda, uh, an emergency doctor. I work here in Rotherham for the last five years. Uh, this area is one of the lowest socioeconomic areas in the UK with the highest rate of obesity. It's a small town right next to Sheffield. Um, and um, the, the shocking thing about it, it is just, just across one single street, if you cross it, there's 16 years of uh, life expectancy drop from Sheffield to Rotherham, just one street. Um, so I started working um, in this area five years ago and um, after seeing the health inequality, um, I have founded Hero of Health. A little bit about my story. Um, so I'm from uh, Ukraine. I have traveled uh, all my life and I ended in the UK in 2012, started my surgical training. And um, unfortunately through this healthy lifestyle of surgical training, I have become very sick. Uh, I developed colitis and multiple um, lung infections um, back to back and uh, a severe impetigo that was not responding to any steroids, antibiotics over the next um, 10 years to follow. Um, I have unfortunately been unable to continue my work due to um, the colitis and the impetigo. And at that point with my partner, we have uh, decided in 2019 to restudy medicine because unfortunately I didn't like the, my own medicine. Um, after um, learning about nutrition, and stress, um, but not knowing about life, evidence-based lifestyle medicine yet, I've been able to get off of all of my medications and regain my um, normal life and go back to work. This is when I started researching about evidence-based lifestyle medicine and decided that there is no way back. Uh, there's only one way forward with evidence-based lifestyle medicine, as I think for all of you. Um, together, um, we have grown a quite large team um, Dr. Adrian, uh, who is uh, GP, Dr. Wendy, 
with whom with uh, with whom we have been dealing with um, the walks that I will be talking about, and our amazing anesthetic trainee uh, Thomas Kelly, who is our software engineer as well. Um, we have gained uh, uh, an unlimited healthy aging award uh, last year, and we are going on the NHS Clinical Entrepreneur Program starting this year. So after my own health uh, issues, and with all of us being disgruntled with what we have been seeing in the NHS, we have decided we need to change the way we practice medicine. There is no problem with uh, the surgical and the medical approach. It's great. We all know it. Uh, I'm an emergency doctor. I love it. Uh, drugs save lives. Um, and it's great to put them on medications and do minor procedures and operations but they are not our forever solution. We very well much know that genetics are not our destiny. Um, and if we just look at the um, systematic approach within the NHS, we know that we can make a difference. So we had to, we couldn't wait. We decided that we have to find a way to get patients off of medications and to prove it to our colleagues um, that it's not just a holistic problem, that it's an actual real science that actually works in practice. Um, I started, um, and why do we need to do that? Besides the um, um, health problems with, um, with our patients and ourselves um, and our colleagues who are all affected, this problem is last year uh, was shown to costing us 58 billion pounds in the, in the UK. The side effects of uh, chronic diseases, um, in addition to the nine billion um, pounds that it, it's costing us just to our NHS. I mean, we have to do something about it. And that's why I'm so grateful for this uh, conference. So the solution, we all know what it is. It's evidence-based lifestyle medicine. Um, often I do have to give a bit of a lecture on this, but I think I don't have to do it for you. Uh, the power is... Um, is, is very clear to all of us. So I started using, when I became board certified, I started using evidence-based lifestyle medicine in a &E. That was in 2020. Um, and I just couldn't um, talk about anything else except the power um, of lifestyle change and telling my patients that they can get on medications, they need to acutely, but they also can get off. So as I started conversing and changing the way I, I actually document and take history for my patients in a and &E, um, I started noticing little key cue points from my patients to tell me when I'm allowed to share with them this relevant information and when they are not comfortable to do so. Um, just like in the case of Gary, he was perceptive, one o'clock in the morning. Um, I have spoken to him about the options because I felt that he was ready for it, even though it was one in, in the morning. Um, and he wanted to know. I informed him of um, the, the dietary changes, the exercise, sleep management that he, he can implement. He was very perceptive to it. And um, only after uh, afterwards, I called him once, once a month on the phone just to check in with him how he's doing on my free time. Um, I have documented that in the notes. And um, after three months, um, he has actually come off of his uh, medications, reverse his diabetes, his hypertension went from 190 to 100 and, uh, from 225, all the way to 100 to about 70. Um, he has been suffering from uh, fatty liver disease uh, for over 10 years. He has reversed that as well. Um, and uh, he, he is now burst of full of energy with a good amount of weight loss um, and feeling better than ever. Um, after many many similar patient cases in the emergency department, I decided this cannot be that only those patients who are communicating with me within this area are benefiting from it. And it's unfair to see every single day my patients are dying from heart disease, heart attacks, um, complications of diabetes and kidney problems. Why? Because I'm watching them. I'm seeing them uh, actually going through this problem and actually dying in front of my eyes, well knowing that only three months ago, I would have met them just like I did with Gary. Guess what? They would be Gary right now instead of having a heart attack. It's very difficult to deal with that notion. And I think it resonates uh, with, with all of you. This um, ability to do something about things, even though we know we could do better just because of um, 
just because of structural problems. I mean, uh, do you think that's something that's resonating with you as well, that problem? Yeah. 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 It's very difficult, I think, for a clinician um, or any healthcare professional to live with the notion that we could do better, that we know that there are more Garys out there, but we just cannot get the message across. So then what happened? Um, we have partnered with uh, Dr. Wendy, an amazing GP here in Sheffield. Um, she's just, she's there here on the right, a very fit, amazing triathlete, an incredible inspiration, who has also become a lifestyle uh, medic. Um, and together with the great support of the Burley Health Center, we decided to roll out the, the program um, in the GP surgery. We have been doing this completely free of charge on our own time. Once a week, we have come to the Burley Health Center and we offered walks with evidence-based lifestyle education. Uh, we have crafted our art over time. Uh, we met all, every single Wednesday. It's unbelievable to think that it's been already nine to 10 months since we have been doing it and seeing amazing results. You can see our patients here. They are really psyched about Wednesdays and they always give uh, uh, amazing feedback and testimonials on how it has changed uh, their life. This is a rainy day and we're still psyched and happy and enjoying life uh, within our community. Um, this is actually just a picture, but actually they were singing and dancing and this wasn't, <laughs> nobody set this up. They just started singing in the middle of the rain and I thought I'll capture it. So a little bit about the walks. Here's a little video. Everything around me looks so beautiful and sweet. Heavenly desire. Everything so bright, it's like a brand new movie scene. I'll be a mercy. Colors, pictures, perfect, vibrant. Game is paradise. And the work is going. So sorry for that, a little bit of silliness, but we are full of that. Um, lots of silly, lots of fun, lots of music and movement. So we uh, deliver walks um, every single week on Wednesdays uh, for the, for the, sorry, start that technology. We deliver these walks every Wednesday, um, the two of us. Um, what, what we wanted to learn from this year is to understand how can we communicate lifestyle medicine to our patients, especially in a place uh, where um, there is no money. Most of our patients are on benefits. Um, it's difficult to break through uh, cultural and social barriers. And we wanted to know how could we create true communities, communities which can communicate within, um, with each other without us being in it. How could we empower them to open up um, their, their, their themselves, their personalities through all the social wounds that they have had. And we have been able to achieve that. Um, after the walks, naturally, the progression of that uh, went into cooking sessions. And I'll show you just a little video of that.
Cool. How did you like those videos? <laughs> they um, <laughs> um so why do we know that the walks have have been uh success and the community started really communicating and creating their own empowered little group is because these cooking sessions actually weren't set up by us we only um gave a little bit of tools and support but it was actually set up uh, by one of our patients i will talk about who has actually regained her health and found purpose and by a natural progression she has found the kitchen for the community and used her cooking skills to teach them how to cook uh, a more unprocessed healthy way so that was actually i think the greatest result to show that people can do if we offer them the empowerment no matter what their socioeconomic background is so let's talk about uh, our, our results so for example brenda here um she's in a wheelchair there's always this debate between is it nutrition or is it exercise that make makes pe people lose weight right i mean do, do you guys ever ask that or do your patients ask that So the, the question would be, uh, the answer here is very clear. It's nutrition. A lovely Brenda, she has been in a wheelchair with arthritic uh, joint problems um, and um, the inability to mobilize more than from furniture to furniture for many, many years. And she was very overweight. When she just understood that processed foods and high sugar, uh, particularly in her tea was a problem <laughs> within just four months she lost so much weight that she went from extra extra large to large this four stone weight loss and it happened so quickly that her gp actually started investigating her for cancer so she had an endoscopy and a colonoscopy to find out why she's losing so much weight so fast and why is her insulin having to be decreased um, and uh, even though she was feeling better lighter she started mobilizing the first, the first response from um, her GP was to, to find out if maybe she has cancer. Maybe that's why she's losing weight. It cannot be that the weight, that the lifestyle changes and eating better could have such a dramatic response. Um, after she, the, the cancer scare, scare went, uh, went away, she rejoined the group and she was super psyched to report that her uncontrolled insulin levels um, that uh, were, for which she was in hospital for, for a week are now uh, totally controlled. Her glucose from 22 and a normal day went down to seven to nine regular without any peaks. Her blood pressure normalized and with the new weight loss, she actually started walking much more confidently. So here's Brenda and um, you can see it's Paul, her husband in the background who is using her scooter now. <laughs> they are a really funny couple. Uh, they are fantastic with a uh, great support team uh, behind each other. And uh, you can see what's possible even just on basic uh, nutritional change. You no longer um, need to focus on just exercise for weight loss. We encourage our patients to use movement uh, to encourage their mental health and not for any weight loss. So that's Brenda. And here's Karen. Karen um, is an incredible lady. She has been under the endocrinology specialist for over 15 years. She was a diabetic for 25 years. And um, even, even not for the last 10 years, she never went under with a HbA1c of 100. When we met her, she had high blood pressure of um, really quite high blood pressure medication. Uh, her HbA1c was 143. She has two eating disorders um, and she suffers from weight loss. She also has a thyroid problem as well, hypothyroidism. After only 14 walks and a bit of education, uh, Karen has gone down to an HbA1c of 82. That's after 14 walks. She was under endocrinology for 15 years and she never went under 100. Um, her endocrinologist called us um, to see what's going on. Um, we told them the secret, that there is no secret. <laughs> um, it's just love and care and a little bit of support. Um, she came off of her uh, hypertension medications. Um, she, she had significant weight loss. And now, after regaining her energy, 
she is the one who has founded Hero of Health Kitchen. Um, she went out of her way to uh, find the kitchen, which is a church nearby, um, started to do the education course, uh, laid out tables for uh, her friends now um, to teach them how to use basic ingredients to make food from scratch. Uh, she has started this now six months ago. Since then, she has been cooking uh, regularly every single month. Our patients are coming. And not only are they learning how to cook and gaining confidence, but they're also eating. Some of them are for the first time eating a whole meal a day. It was terrible to hear that in the 21st century in England, right now, some of our male patients um, having to uh, ration their portions because their children won't have enough if, if they're eating uh, a normal meal. So uh, quite a few patients are actually coming to just be able to eat and have a wholesome meal uh, besides the health benefit that the others are, um, are gaining. A bit emotional story because we have become very close to these patients and finding more and more out about them and knowing how much they're struggling when they really shouldn't be, um, it's uh, is something that keeps pushing us forward every single day. So here's David. David is in, on the right here <laughs> with his buddies. And I love to, to point out um, that we have quite a few um, male participants. It's usually mostly women um, uh, in uh, such groups, but it's actually quite male heavy. Why? Um, is because mainly we are just proposing friendly walks, um, nothing more uh, at the start. <laughs> and when they are referred in, it's just referred in without any notion of community or anything. As men, I, if you are in the seats, I'm pretty sure it's socializing is uh, not always, and chit-chatting not always on the top of your list. But once they do come, they notice how friendly we are and um, how open we are and how easy to talk with everyone and they stay. So David was really heavily depressed, just like Stephen in the middle. But David's uh, story is special because he's a mental health uh, patient, um, 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 uh, clinician, um, healthcare professional, sorry, who um, was off work for about three months due to depression. He has been on antidepressants for over, um, well, he says donkey's years, but maybe around 15 years. And after joining our walks, after just a few walks, he was able to get off of his antidepressants and go back to work. Now, he also suffered from type two diabetes. He was overweight. And after regaining his purpose within the group, he reversed his type 2 diabetes. He lost a stone as a side effect of um, gaining more abundance in food, um, gaining more love and enjoyment in his life rather than a reductionist lifestyle. He has actually now founded the Hero of Health Walks um, and is pushing forward to actually deliver more walks for the other surgeries as well. So we have been. Um, we have been in the Burley Health Center for now nine to 10 months. Um, after our successes with our patients, um, the Township One PCN has um, approached us to ask if we could roll out the program to the six di different GP surgeries. We were delighted to hear this and we have looked at how we could use all that we have learned to actually scale the project. So it actually works without us being in the center. Um, so what did we do? We had to find a way to actually educate our patients and empower them with the evidence-based lifestyle education. Um, and for them to be able to transition from patient to a facilitator. Um, to do this, we have started um, writing up uh, the manuals for them. And we created a workshop where we train our patients up to become um, not only heroes of their own health, but that of their patients as well. And as you could see now, Karen and David is pushing forward our work uh, without us having to be in it. We are now rolling out the program, um, starting with the second GP surgery. We have gained funding for it. 
uh, for the first uh, 12 months. Um, and every single month we will add an extra, um, extra walk and cooking session for the other GP surgeries. Each time we deliver the workshops where more of the patients who have been able to reverse their diseases can become leaders uh, in their own community. Thus, it is self-perpetuating um, and it, the power stays within the community without us having to do um, anything um, other than just guide the system so it can work for them rather than us working and leading uh, the way. So our work was published um, in CSJ, in the Independent, and um, we had an interview with Toby Foster a few months ago uh, from BBC Sheffield. And afterwards, uh, Toby Foster have um, interviewed one of our patients, actually quite a few of them, but in person, one of them, um, and spoken to us. And immediately he has actually joined our program. He has started to reverse his own diseases. And because of that, he has been now um, able to continue his work. His shortness of breath has improved. Um, his heart condition um, significantly improved. Um, he has lost a lot of weight and he's one of our uh, biggest advocates. Uh, he has again interviewed us yesterday at the Burley Health Center. We had a 30 minute interview with the patients. Um, as a solution to the NHS current uh, crisis. So how do we actually scale it? Because everything is good in small, um, but how can we kind of retain all that emotion and feeling and love and compassion and also bring the education? So with uh, Dr. Kelly, we are working on, on the software in the background to deliver what is on our website into an app version. Uh, we <clears throat> gamify lifestyle medicine to be able to uh, make it make uh, fiber content calculation uh, uh, accessible to all by offering them advice uh, on the app on how they can um, use cheap uh, whole foods to cook up what we have learned in, in practice. Um, all the other pillars are covered as well. We build communities as described above around GP surgeries. So it's personable, it's local. And within those communities, patients can actually find themselves and go out for walks like they have done uh, with Jeff outside of our education. They can buddy up to empower each other um, on the app and offline as well, go for coffees, but then chat with each other on the app so that we are not losing that personable aspect, but at the same time, we are not missing out on the scalability of the education through technology. Um, we support our patients just like we have done in person on the app, on demand, uh, through evidence-based lifestyle coaches. Um, this is now offered on the website and we have tested it and it works really quite smoothly. And the data that we gather um, from the patient's input uh, and what they have done through their gadgets is actually fed back to the GP surgery. So now when the GPs get a once usable link, um, they can actually see a snapshot of their patient's lifestyle for the last month or year. Based on that, they can look at the guidelines of evidence-based lifestyle guidelines for the different pillars. And actually they can have a snapshot of idea what they could actually um, support their patients forward with. Like for example, if they haven't been eating enough um, whole foods, like more fresh vegetables and, and, um, and fruits, they can see it on the snapshot from our, our, from our um, graphs. And they can actually say, without having to take a full history, they can actually say you should increase your um, fresh fruit and vegetable intake by how much. It's quite much more accurate um, than if we take a history of our patients. Uh, and also it takes a lot, a lot of time to take a lifestyle history. So we are hoping to actually simplify for our um, GPs and uh, even a &E doctors to find out what these patients' lifestyle medicine lifestyle um, history has looked like, 
and what we could suggest to them even if the doctor hasn't got training in evidence-based lifestyle medicine there are pillars um, uh, below it and the guideline for them to show what they could achieve uh, with uh, that prescription so our goal is to roll out the program not only to the G six GP surgeries this year, but actually target the um, South, South Yorkshire area. Um, we are backed by the clinical di directors locally, as well as the public health uh, leads here. Um, quite a few of them have been quite supportive throughout um, our journey. Um, and we are looking at how we can roll it out so it's free of charge to our patients completely so that they never have to pay for it um, and it's freely accessible uh, to our um, to both our patients and GPs. So it's short but um, I hope I was in time. I would love to uh, invite all of you to join us. Uh, our, our mission is to save as many as we can, hopefully one day millions, but you know you got a dream to keep going in this climate. Um, and hopefully we can save the NHS as much as we can. As a, and um, if you would like to get in contact with us, do email us um, or check out our website. We are open to everyone. Uh, this is a huge project um, and we are welcoming anyone who would like to get involved. Uh, we need as many hands on, on the deck as possible. Um, thank you. I hope you enjoy that. Thank you. Thank you. Very kind. Thank you so much, Linda. I'm sure everyone will agree that that was just, yeah, really inspiring. And yeah, it's so brilliant to have some of those, you know, patient stories in there as well to really see how it can make a difference. And yeah, I can't claim that I've fully kind of grasped your, your, secret yet as you know I think you know a lot of us you know being lifestyle medicine enthusiasts you know have given you know talking about lifestyle medicine to patients ago but I think you you must have discovered like a real secret there to kind of keep those patients you know really engaged and you know I wonder if it's to do with that you know community offering you know going out of your way offering those walks with patients um I wonder if yeah you could yeah perhaps that could be a first question so you know what exactly <laughs> do you do to to get those people so infused and so motivated to get on board i think that's a great question and i think the answer won't be it will be a cliche i think it's called i i think it's love <laughs> i know it's um it's strange but i think with when we care for our patients like you guys do like when you show your um motivation for good for them they even men from Yorkshire, and I think you can guess uh, my accent is not very Yorkshire, um, <laughs> uh, but the honesty and the common uh, desire to offer them something good, they can feel it. Um, and our patients open up through that. Um, when we offer them a hand, they actually, what our patients have reported is that for the first time we learn how to hug. You have taught me how to open up. And we do that in a very fun way, in a very um, non, non obtrusive way, but still we don't shy away from showing emotions and showing that we care. And when we, um, the, the key here to progress within the community is like David, like Karen, now Jeff, and quite a few more patients who believe in it, who feel good from it, who come off of their medications, they also will continue um, the education of their own friends and family and the new patients to open up. And we teach them inadvertently through our behavior. And now in our workshops, we actually teach our workshops on how to open up emotionally uh, without them really knowing that we are talking about it, if that makes sense. Because as soon as, as, soon as you become a bit gooey, people like shut off, like, oh, come on, what is this? Um, but as long as you are really being human about it and you translate uh, behavioral science really um, to serve them and not serve me, they become very open and um, uh, open not only emotionally, but open for the information to come in as well. 
So to, to scale it, definitely we, we continue to master those workshops to continue teaching our patients um, how, to, how to do that before everything else. Thank you, that's really great. You're happy to take a few more questions? It's after yeah, one. Sure. There are going to be quite a few. You're happy to have me. One, one from here, right at the front. Um, let me know if you can hear it, otherwise I'm happy to repeat it back to you, okay? I've just had a look at your website and it's fantastic. Can we use that with our patients? Yes, yeah. so if you can use it with your patient, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, um, absolutely. Uh, there will be a revamp, actually, a new one will, a uh, similar version of it, but a um, uh, new model of it will come out this weekend, that you're more than welcome to use it. It's um, um, free of charge to everyone. So yeah, um, enjoy. <laughs> and if you have any questions on how we can bring it into your community, um, we have free coaching, um, um, group co consultations with a professional coach that you can tap into and refer your patients into without any barriers. Um, we also have education uh, on Sundays. So there's quite a lot going on there that is completely free of charge. Um, and if you would like to bring a service into your GP area, then uh, do send me an email and we can uh, see how we can scale that. Amazing, that's great. So I've got another question right in front here. Hi, Dr. Linda. Um, that was very inspiring. Thank you. Um, it's really great to see the impact you're having with adults. I'm just wondering whether you're working with children and families because there's a massive prevention opportunity there. Yes, thank you for the question. And it, I, I completely agree. Um, a lot of the patients actually bring their children on the walks as well. And uh, through the filtration of information through the parents, we have noted that actually the children themselves um, who whilst the info inf uh, filtrates through the parents is the kids who came forward a lot of times to offer um, different creative solutions to how their parents could do better so one of the uh, children she's seven years old and um, she heard and what we were teaching her and she actually pushed her mother to go to the store and look for the apples the pears and the vegetables, um, and she took photos, she's seven years old, to show how her shopping has changed over the last two months. So I think the setting is very friendly from a family point of view, and we encourage uh, all sexes and all age groups to come and join, and very often dogs come as well, so that makes it even more friendly. Um, and even some, we had some, um, one of our greatest wins for me is um, with an autistic patient who never spoke to us um, for the, for eight months. Just this month has opened up, um, and she's quite young. And she has opened up and she hugged one of us, which was insane um, <laughs> because she would be always really backing off. So I think yes, definitely there is quite an ability and opportunity to advertise it more for families as well. Thank you. Another question at the back of that. Having myself worked in A and E for the last nine years as a nurse, and having those interactions with patients, particularly for lifestyle medicine, um, I would love to see up and down the country doctors like yourself and nurses, where we have even one nurse, one doctor who is lifestyle intervention, and even in those short moments that you get in triage or consultations that we could have a petition where we really push this in every A&E department and hospital, regardless of the department, that this could be really spearheaded because most of the time, and this is no discrediting or disrespect to the clinicians, it is, oh, your COPD will increase your prayer, will increase your antibiotic, but there's no discussion around anti-inflammatory foods, gut health, uh, and it really needs to be in the syllabus of nurses of doctors of gps more nutrition as we all know but just some of the simple lifestyle things that you're talk that you're discussing i, I would love you to go on national television <laughs> and just say please please nhs england wales scotland ireland please start introducing this into your consultations with the patient is there a push forward that there is obviously but yeah. 
So I'm not sure if you could hear, I'm not sure if you could hear that. Um, there was a question from Clyde at the back, but I think essentially, like, have you got any ideas of how to get this into, you know, A and E, busy A and E departments, for example, or GP surgery? It's just to get clinicians on board. Yes, thank you for the comment. From an A and E point of view, I um, you have to have a very tough skin <laughs> um, to to talk to emergency doctors, your colleagues, and nurses about lifestyle medicine. So I have been doing it now for two and a half years. I have changed the way I actually take history. I have a lifestyle medicine um, section in there. And interestingly, I picked up on patients, for example, a 55 year old male who went through a divorce and started eating lollipops. He has been eating 25 lollipops a day. He kept coming into a &E because his mood was erratic and um, he was referred to his GP. The GP put him on antidepressants. Then he came back and ran into me. I think this was like the 20th visit in two months. And after just asking him, boom, 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 going through a few questions, nutrition quickly, what has changed? Sleep, what has changed? Exercise, how has it changed? It opened up immediately the opportunity to find out that this guy, when he started becoming erratic, is when he started eating lollipops. So I took, I asked him to finish, stop eating lollipops, all that sugar. I explained to him the difficulty with that uh, for his mind. And I followed up uh, in three weeks time. He said, doctor, my mood is completely normal. I have, I, I stopped my antidepressant myself. I didn't advise him to do that, but he's like, I feel perfect. Everything is fine. He has never come back to any. There are multiple examples of such where we just ask a few questions and we can nail it in any &E. finding out not only the medical causes but also the lifestyle causes within a and &E, we can reduce massively our intake of patients and actually we can empower and reassure them so how can we can do that i i started doing it myself and two years ago <laughs> you know when i started talking about nutrition and my colleagues started picking up on it um, I started really with my colleagues first. So those who had issues, they see how I am. I'm always um, eating right. They see my behavior. And I think because of that, they started coming towards and asking questions. But still quite a few of them were um, reticent to, to kind of go down the route. And when I have started talking to my patients about lifestyle, I was actually physically pinned against the wall by another colleague, a uh, more senior one, to say that I have no right to talk about anything with related lifestyle medicine. Um, if I talk about nutrition, it's totally out of the way. I should not do it. So I, you know, when you're physically threatened, it's a little bit of a, an interesting moment, but I just said, that's fine. I came back with a smile and a PowerPoint presentation to teach um, him or her about <laughs> medicine. So I said, would you have five minutes, please? So I gave her all the nice um, um, studies that we all know about. And very quickly, there was no sorry or anything, but very quickly I was allowed to actually start talking about lifestyle medicine. So I must say, um, I think we have to have a very tough skin, but there is a way. We have to be examples of what we preach so that they can see that they, we are energized and strong. And then we have to give them a tool. So I started now uh, actually asking the questions and creating tools for myself. And hopefully, maybe if somebody's interested uh, within um, this group, we could come together to maybe um, go out more and talk to uh, any &E practices on actually incorporating or any other specialist incorporating these questions. So that it becomes a norm within our history taking. The next step that I have done is actually became the link worker uh, lead within a and &E. So I communicate with the link worker to be able to educate our colleagues about the opportunities outside. And through that, somehow finding a way to show that it is within your need to prescribe lifestyle medicine, because that's what link workers do. So I'm kind of sneakily going through that path to be able to practice lifestyle medicine in emergency medicine and showing that it is possible and it's needed, not just for me. Thank you. Got <laughs> a few more minutes. Any other questions at all? Is there one over there? Um, so I'm a medical student, and I think it's very important that we're not taught about this in particular at all. Um, so would you be open to sort of teaching at universities here in and 
um, sort of incorporate that into education. Yeah, actually, um, so perhaps I can just kind of um, make one comment just because, you know, of the Cornwall situation here. Um, you know, kind of Sham, kind of one of your kind of deans, as he's actually, I think, really pushed forward. He's one of our special interest group leads as well to kind of, you know, get exactly that right, kind of bring more life to medicine into medical education in Cornwall. And um, which year are you, if you don't mind me asking, third year? Um, because I actually kind of delivered two life medicine sessions this year for medical students. And I think it was year four and year five. So, you know, you're right. I think on a national level, there's no, you know, no real, um, you know, um, yeah, consents on like how that should be done. But certainly in Cornwall, I think we're slowly but surely getting into that. I'm not sure how the situation is up in Sheffield. Is there any involvement for life medicine? So for medical students, no, we don't have anything yet. Uh, unfortunately, I think it needs to, if we want to see a change, it needs to start in university. Um, but I guess we, we could wait forever for that because they're not going to change. Um, what we do do is that locally with the surgeries who have medical students, we are teaching them and they're offering us the opportunity to do so. Um, in Sheffield, we are starting to have more groups coming together where medical students are welcome. Uh, but we do need um, people up here to be able to kind of push that forward because it really does seem like if we individually don't do it, it's not going to happen. Right, thank you. Thanks. Great question. Any any other questions here? One at the back. Hi, um, I'm a health professional well being coach in the UK, and we get patients up to the end of the day. I'm a coach at Mount Healthy. You hear that at the back i think it's about like question about insurance around kind of taking groups out into into nature and that was kind of my health coach here from one of the pcns in cornwall yeah so insurance is easy um when you have um which is the uh, vsm accreditation um and um uh, you can have insurance for walks within that so uh, facilitators uh, coaches vslm accredited um physicians um you can actually apply for walking insurance um and there's no problem with it it's around 150 pounds a year to cover and there are some steps to follow so you have to create a map where you're going to be walking what are the hazards around the area what could go wrong and take some pictures and once that's done you're insured that's all we ask for thank you pardon so around how so your question was how to kind of do it for individuals or how to do it for GP surgery if you think eh? uh great question so no sure so if you had that bit so it was um about whether you know the insurance kind of model you just uh, spoke about with the BSLM you know accreditation as well whether there is a way you know for GP surgeries to have that as well can you as a GP surgery I guess you know insure yourself to take your patients out for walk I think is the question yeah Yes, definitely. Um, there are different types of levels of, but the question is what information you're going to give them. So if, um, so they're walking insurance for, for GP surgeries for individuals that you can purchase at every level. But I think from a BSM point of view, because you teach them as well um, on the walk and that covers that as well. So if there's anything um, uh, misinformation or clinical cover, it gives it too. So if you are not talking about and not advising your patients, then you, there are multiple different um, insurances that cover you. And if you're a coach, then within your own clinical remit, you should ask your insurance company if they are not able to give you the insurance, then who is? But it's really the clinical aspect that is a, a tricky bit. If you're a clinician, I know that actually you can have walking insurance with your patients with um, with your indemnity. So somebody within the clinical practice could actually apply, but you have to ask for it in particular. Um, so I would like to have walking insurance and they will accommodate you. That's really good. Thank you. That's really helpful practical tips there. Got um, time for another question? On over there. Um, thanks again. But you mentioned that you're a lead uh, kind of link worker. Uh, how does help or heroes of health interlinked with social prescribing and with uh, link work in general? Um, so the link worker from an A&E point of view actually um, is in a premature state. So I um, linked 
up with became a lead, lead in link working so to understand the system and what does the region need outside of here of health from an emergency point of view i wanted to know how we can improve our communication and my uh, emergency history taking by linking it with link workers because it seems like as always there is no connection within multidisciplinary teams the link workers are working and you know they're taking some history of the patients we do the same but and you know all the specialties are doing this but nobody actually communicates with each other so a lot of times as doctors we pick up on patients who would need um, who are lonely and need um, support with that they come one o'clock in the morning and it's devastating to know that this 80 year old lady who burst out crying in my um, in my room is not able to have anybody to join her or see her. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I help my colleagues to take the appropriate history so that we can actually link them up uh, stream streamlined with the link workers to get these patients out of A&E and back into social support because there's a lot of support, but nobody's communicating with each other. So this is why I wanted to um, get involved. And this involvement now led to our ability to possibly set up Hero of Health for uh, emergency medicine department referrals uh, around, the, around the hospital. So this is in premature state, but um, through these steps, we are now able to possibly start a referral uh, process from emergency medicine into Hero of Health. <clears throat> Thank you, that's great. One more question over there. So could you hear that, Linda? I think that sorry, it was required. So I think essentially the question is around like, you know, do you see yourself, you know, fitting into like a social prescribing hub? Because um, so where are you working? What's your background? Mm -hmm. In Plymouth. Okay. And so your role, are you working within social prescribing? Pardon? GP partner, is it? Okay. So your question from a GP partner from Plymouth, just um, you know, asking about the practicality and whether, you know, where there is already social prescribing set up, whether that would be, you know, potentially the best place to kind of you know have you merge in as well. Um, because it can be difficult to set up things, you know, when you don't have those green space at your doorstep. And um yeah, kind of roll out things from there. Was that roughly the question? <laughs> yeah, triage from there. Yeah, and I think the problem of like fragmentation, you know, as you mentioned before, you know, there being so many good things out there, but I guess the problem being of, you know, how do you get people to the right place, whether it could be one big hub, you know, with you in it, <laughs> and then we can just refer everyone to you basically. <laughs> Yeah, so right now what is uh, immediately possible for referral and how we do it is through AccuRx um, referrals from GP practices from social prescribers as well as GPs and whoever health coaches, some GP surgeries have health coaches, and they are referring patients um, into our online services. Uh, so health, coach, health coaching, cooking online with your patients, um, as well as the community where patients can ask questions 
um, about anything and everything. So the online version, you can refer right away if you would like to um, discuss that further. Um, we could have a Zoom chat on that um, without any barriers. Um, the patients just need an Acurex uh, referral for patients, particularly with uh, chronic diseases. So type two diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and loneliness and mental health issues. They can find a lot of resources, um, um, free coaching, and then cooking sessions. Um, if the there's no green spaces to start the walks with, I think that is the best way to kind of familiarize yourself with what we can offer, and also seeing looking around uh, the area with where you are to see if we can actually start um, maybe a walk. If the walk is not possible, then we could start a cooking session near you, uh, based on how we have already developed it. So. Certainly, I think anywhere where you can give them a flyer or send an Acurex code to come and log in and find out more, um, it's, it's, it, it could be a, a good start outside of Sheffield as well. Amazing. And just to check, what's your capacity? A second. <laughs> See all of us thinking like, that's amazing. And a lot of people to refer to you. Have you got like, um, you know, a certain number where you're like, actually, our coaches can only do so much or is it? So it's uh, the coaching sessions are um, set up um, in the calendar. So anybody can join in their group coaching sessions. Uh, they can be up to 500 people. Um, there are some core people who already are there who are leading it with comfort. And then people can observe from outside and become part of the um, experience. I think that's why it's really quite um, accessible because we are using the group coaching model where people can self-identify to say when they are ready to be coached and also when they are ready to ask questions on the platform and then later in person. Amazing. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Linda. I'll have time for one last question. That's all right. It starts a bit late, if that's okay. And then we'll move on. Thank you. Yeah, no, thanks so much, um, Julie. So it was more of a comment about, you know, our social setup here in Cornwall is we're quite lucky. So we've got a very strong, you know, social prescribing and voluntary sector here in Cornwall. That's great. So perhaps there was one more question, I think. Let's go for the question then, if that's all right. Thanks so much for your talk. Absolutely amazing work. Thank you so much You hear that, Linda? It was about, you know, as a GP, where, you know, where's the best resource, you know, to get some, you know, solid evidence based lifestyle medicine advice from? So I don't know if you have gone through all the evidence on the ACLM website. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, he has it. Um, do you want to say a bit more about how to find that, perhaps? Yeah, so the, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine has abundance of um, evidence on ev anything and everything that you kind of want to back. I think, I think they have enough for any GP to kind of, um, to any clinician to feel that, okay, I mean, <laughs> there's two points of this, like with everything. A, there is enough evidence and the benefit risk ratio of you suggesting um, a fit prescription for, for um, changing your lifestyle and the risks of not giving you know, some broccoli to your patient and advising them to stop eating ice cream, the risk benefit ratio is just huge. Yes, maybe we don't have 
you know, encyclopedia full of uh, data on uh, broccoli, but at the same time, it's kind of, kind of common sense. Um, and when we have at least enough information to back the two together, I found that really works. I think it takes a bit of a grind to for you to believe it. I have used it on myself. I have seen the, the evidence in my patients. And with that, I feel the evidence that we have is also kind of amplifying, if that makes sense. You have to live it, feel it, and then present the information because um, of the of the of the results that you are seeing. With that, if you start the conversations and start delivering it to your patients, you'll start getting those cues to feel that this must happen. And you make people believe that it's true too. And what is the risk of giving some patient advice to eat more apples and more broccolis and less McDonald's? I mean, that that that's not a not a, a big question. I think I think it's the question is how do we take a few seconds more to ask the right questions, to be able to identify oh. the large harms that, that our patients experiencing from doing the wrong thing. Uh, but certainly ACLM, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine has um, abundance of data. And also I work with um, a few people from Lima University in California. Um, on their, in their hospital, they are really open if you have any particular evidence you want to find, you can actually communicate with Lima University in California and they would be very supportive too. Hmm. Amazing. Thank you so much, Linda. That's brilliant. I think we'll have to stop it here as we're you know, about to break for our first tea, but thanks so much again. That was truly wonderful. Um, and yeah, I'll, you're probably gonna, gonna get quite a few emails from Cornwall and certainly referrals, I can imagine. So yeah, yeah so thanks great. again. So thank you have very a much for having day. me. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Do get in touch. Have a good one. Bye, guys. <laughs>